Alright guys, I have a little scene set up here that we can use to generate something like a checkerboard that goes infinitely into the background with accurate divisions. So let's talk about some of the things that I have set up. We've covered them in previous videos. First off, we have our principal vanishing point right here. And I'm just going to add a little assistant for that. And again, we use the principal vanishing point for lines that are parallel to our line of sight. So if we're looking straight out, that's where our line of sight is going to die. And similarly, if we have lines on the road here, they're all going to appear to vanish there. Stuff like that. I also have my diagonal vanishing points marked. And again, if you have something like a line here, and it goes to the back here. We can use diagonal vanishing points to cut this and that's going to give us a perfect back edge. So this is, you know, I'm fudging it a little bit, but that's how you get perfect squares. And we can also use diagonal vanishing points for their own sake. Or we can just... Uh, we can always just uh, actually draw with them. And... and get something like a rectangle here on the ground. Uh, I also have marked the true vertical, which I think of, it doesn't have to be the, I mean, I don't know if true vertical is the technical term, but really what it is is in the same way that we have an actual horizon because we see the end of the curvature of the Earth, uh, you can imagine a horizon going in the opposite direction and it's mathematically the same thing as a uh, diagonal vanishing point over here in the same way that you can have a top uh, view of you and here's your line of sight going out that way uh, diagonal lines going off of this 45 degrees are going to eventually hit your uh, they're also going to vanish in the same way that lines like this are going to vanish <coughs> in the same way imagine if instead of being a top view this is a side view and the same is true, it's just we don't see it because really, normally, this ends up hitting the ground and this travels into space up here. But it's useful to know that in terms of things like, I don't know, like what if we have opposite of something on the ground here? What if we have like a wall going back? Well, we can, in the same way, that we had something on the ground here and we cut the diagonals to get a perfect vanishing point. We can use the opposite of the diagonal vanishing points, which I've, for no reason other than I think it, uh, I've decided to name the zenith, the zenith vanishing point and the nadir vanishing point. <clears throat> so, just like with our diagonal vanishing point, we can go like that. And now we have a back edge, right? Now, uh, now I also have this rectangle drawn here, and really fast. I'm gonna erase some of this junk. And why do we care about this square here? Well, before we get into that, I want to talk about the camera view. You see, normally, a lot of times, when you're beginning, you just put your diagonal vanishing points right here on the canvas, right? Because it's easy, and then you can see it. And in fact, uh, usually our diagonal vanishing points are off to the uh, distance. And there's a reason for that. And I think a camera is arguably the 
easiest way to understand this. Let's create a new document to draw on. So imagine uh, you're looking inside of a camera and uh, our camera has a couple of components. It's got this human, this sort of body thing. And then we have this lens here and the lens has glass. And the way light works is uh, it passes through this lens into the camera body and what happens when that when it does that is it hits something called the image sensor so imagine you have an image sensor and this has a physical size to it uh, you probably heard the term 35 millimeter camera well that's because this image sensor is 35 millimeters I think it's actually a measurement of the diagonal kinda like with TVs so this would be 35 <clears throat> and then your lens also has a measurement like 16 or on the opposite end of things 300 so what's the difference between a 300 millimeter lens and a 16 millimeter lens let's do the 16 millimeter one first I'll just clean this up so what if we have a lens and it is literally 16 millimeters from our camera point. One, two, three. So if this is 35, 16 millimeters is gonna be about half of it. So right around here, let's say. That's a really close lens, right? So imagine if uh, that's your distance from your uh, lens to the image sensor, that's gonna affect what rays go into the lens. So I can physically draw this as an X. The light all streams in and it passes at what is known as the nodal point and flips. So right here is the nodal point and it flips the image. But you can see that based on that distance of 16 millimeters, this lens gets a really, really wide angle of view. If I have a person here that's really, really close to us, we're going to see a lot of that guy. Now on the opposite end of things, let's say instead that we have something that is, say, 350 millimeters away. So, just to show that. That means, let's see, if this is 35, that's about 10 times that. So, so somewhere around here is going to be a really, really long picture, right? Something like that is the size of our lens, right? This is a really zoomed out lens. And so when you have something that is like a 300 millimeter lens, you're gonna have an extremely narrow field of view. With the opposite benefit being that you can zoom in on something very, very far away. And look how uh, much our nodal point is here. So the point is, when you see something like this crop factor here, this square, that's a physical representation of how far away you are from something. So, again, you can actually, from a top view, imagine you are the painter. For, let's create a new object. So imagine I have a square here. If you wanted to represent where that is, Let's rotate that exactly 45 degrees. So I'm using this just to get our exact uh, field of view. Uh, let's say you have a, a canvas that is about the same size as you, right? So down here. So you're about this big. Your eyeball starts right here. Here's your head. Here's your shoulders. If you wanted a canvas that is exactly the same size as you, so what is that? Eight, like three times the size of your head, you would have to have it incredibly close 
to get those values on uh, on uh, or to have your diagonal vanishing points actually on it. So this is probably like a two foot piece of paper that is only one foot away from your face. That's how close you have to be for this to represent the window that you're looking at. Now normally what you end up having is something that's a lot more, here's another cat. Meow. Cat wanted to say hi. And to unplug all my cords. Still recording? Yes. <coughs> so what you normally end up having is something that's more like, uh, you know, a one foot piece of paper that's two feet away from your face. In other words, if you draw these diagonals, you can see that you have about an entire piece of paper's width to each side. Now this is if you're trying to get extreme accuracy in what you're representing. And it's helpful to know if you're doing something like uh, positioning a canvas slightly away from you and you know the measurement of your arms. But suffice to say, it's actually just a great way to make sure that your drawing has a little bit more realism to put your diagonal vanishing points off to the side. If you don't want to do that, uh, what I would recommend doing is at the very least using um, do something where you're you're using a crop like that. So basically do a widescreen view of what you're going to draw. So that's the basic idea behind what we're looking at, right? You can think of it as a camera and there's just going to be a certain amount of distance off to the side of our pictures. So let's use all this information and draw an exact checkerboard. Just to make sure I'm on the right thing. I'm going to start by just putting an arbitrary line. Oh, say about there. And I could do this in the exact center, but it doesn't have to be. Do one other thing though. Now, if I have this line, I can also use it to go all the way to the back here. from this point all the way to the back. Now I'm going to cut my diagonal with a slightly light color. And this is going to tell me where my back edge is for a perfect checkerboard. So now I can go like that. So this is approximately my midpoint. And I could use this in combination with this to consistently just get smaller and smaller divisions. But there's another nice thing about this, which is instead of uh, doing that, <clears throat> you know, we have a physical line here. So uh, instead of doing that, I can actually cut this in half here. Actually, no, I think I will use the division. But basically, because this is a 2D element, Because this front plane is a 2D element here, there's nothing that says I can't just say, well, there's uh, one half and one half. Here's one fourth and one fourth. Here's one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, and one eighth. 
And actually, instead of using this diagonal, although it's handy as a starting point to uh, see I got my one half mark slightly off. I can do something like that, and that's about half of that line. That's about half. And therefore, half, 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 half. And I can have all these go back. I'm not getting it perfect. This one is a little more uh, there. I think there's some snap issues going on. But one thing that's cool is that this actually, all these divisions along this uh, back line actually tell me the opposite of what I need. So now I can actually use these. And instead of having to divide this over and over, although I could do that, I could now use this like that. And, um, where to go? So I could do that and then further divide this. But I can also just use these points right here. And that's also going to tell me where they got divided. <coughs> and now I can start coloring in this checkerboard if I wanted. So uh, I'm gonna create a new layer on top of this. And I think this is the tool. create a new layer to do this on. And we can start filling this in. Remember, I don't know how many of you guys know chess, but uh, white on the right, queen takes her color, so. Ooh.
That's the brush I want. And very quickly, we have a chessboard. Now we're not done yet because there's one other thing I wanted to talk about, which is the idea that uh, you don't necessarily need to uh, cut diagonals all the time, and you don't necessarily always have to. Um, uh, basically, if you want a repeating pattern, there's fancier ways to go about it than this. So let's say we wanted something like over here next to our chessboard, a repeating fence. So here's our fence post, maybe. And we want this to have a fence post right here. I would say I want to represent this with um, boards on the fence that are a lot smaller in distance. So here we have big spaces and little spaces, right? There's a little space. Here's a little space. Here's a big space. Here's a little one. Here's a big one. So if I continue this all the way back to the horizon, Uh, I could say that this is any number of size, right? So let's say I cut it here. This is not a perfect square, but it is a perfect rectangle. Now, when I do this, how do I find out where to repeat this next? Well, although I can't use this upper zenith vanishing point, I can nonetheless cut a new diagonal, and once it hits this true vertical, that's going to be where this gate lands. So I can go from this bottom, cut that diagonal, and a little more accurate. That was less accurate. So right here, we have created a new vanishing point. And I'm just going to call it VP. And this one is distinguished in that it doesn't have necessarily mathematical significance, except in the context of this random object. And that's sort of a hard thing to grasp when you're beginning, that you can actually have vanishing points anywhere. I mean, what if there's like a spaceship that's launching and it's going that direction? Well, there you go. I can just arbitrarily say that this is a vanishing point that it's going towards. I don't need to use any uh, single place. And in that way, I can use that as a new vanishing point. So now what happens is I can also cut that again, and I have a new back edge. I can cut it again to there. 
And we're starting to see what we know is the truth about perspective, which is as things recede, they appear closer and closer together. Both uh, these lines are vanishing over here at the principal vanishing point, and these uh, gates are appearing to be closer and closer together. Now, how do I extend these boards? Well, what's cool is that now these divisions are going to tell me some stuff. So I can go from there to there, 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 there. And there you have it, a repeating gate. Okay, next up, we're gonna try and use these perspective rules on something that's a little less boring, which is actually how do we make an, a, a compelling perspective scene? How do we draw stuff that uh, we would actually want to look at in a movie or a comic book is you know so far we've just covered the theory and the conjecture but what we want to do is make art with it right so that's next <laughs>